Welcome! Today I will be discussing my research on iceberg calving and meltwater drainage at Helheim Glacier. The Greenland ice sheet has been losing hundreds of gigatons of ice each year at marine terminating glaciers. Helheim is one of these glaciers. Marine terminating glaciers drain ice from the inland ice sheet to the ocean or fjord. Changes at glacier edges can propagate inland and destabilize ice sheets, so accurate predictions of sea level rise depend on understanding these glaciers. Glaciers lose ice to the ocean either by breaking to form icebergs, a process called calving, or melting. Calving produces different types of icebergs. Tabular icebergs break from floating glacier termini and remain floating upright. Non-tabular icebergs calve from a glacier that has more contact with the ground below, which we call grounded. Here is an example of a large non-tabular calving event. As an iceberg breaks off, it rotates and capsizes. Meltwater forms seasonally on glacier surfaces and drains through fractures in the ice to the bed below. With high meltwater supply, water at the bed can reorganize into channels to drain efficiently. As the buoyant freshwater discharges from a channel into the sea, it forms a plume which rises toward the surface. We hypothesize that plume appearance indicates that the subglacial water system is channelized to a grounded glacial front. At Helheim, the surfacing plume appears as an area of open water surrounded by the ice of the melange, which is a mix of floating ice. This melange makes it impossible to access Helheim by boat for direct measurements. For scale, this ice cliff is up to 100 meters tall. Helheim drains from the southeast Greenland ice sheet and is the fastest glacier in East Greenland, flowing up to 25 meters per day. To study the link between calving and melting at Helheim, I used satellite and time-lapse imagery. This table shows satellite imagery specifications. Here is an example of a meltwater plume from the time-lapse imagery. The plume persisted for almost one month. After the plume disappeared, non-tabular calving occurred. The plume consistently appeared at the central terminus over many years. To measure changes in Helheim's terminus position, I digitized the terminus from satellite imagery. This is a map of terminus positions by date. I also observed that surface meltwater consistently pooled in a meltwater lake L and three down glacier crevassed or fractured regions. To determine the change in meltwater area from satellite imagery, I calculated the normalized difference water index for ice. Now I'll plot the data on a time series from 2011 through 2019. I'll start with the plume. Purple indicates plume presence, pink is absence, and gray is no data. Next, I'll add calving. Cyan represents non-tabular calving, red is tabular, and yellow is mixed. Here, I add terminus position, plotted in kilometers along the y-axis. Finally, I'll add the surface water data. Water area is along the y-axis in square kilometers. Black is the lake, and red, gray, and cyan are the crevassed regions. That brings us to the discussion. First, let's look at terminus position. The terminus was relatively stable through 2016, except for seasonal fluctuations, but in 2017 and 2019, Helheim retreated about 1.5 kilometers beyond previous positions. What about calving and plumes? Here, the time series is broken into three-year intervals. From these data, we can see that no calving occurred while a plume was visible, except for this one exception. On April 16, 2017, a tabular bird calved while a plume was visible. But although these events occurred concurrently, they were separated spatially. Why did calving generally not occur while a plume was visible? Well, when Helheim is completely grounded, basal crevasses could be unable to form, making calving difficult. This supports our hypothesis that plume appearance indicates a grounded glacial front and channelized subglacial water system. Also, the consistent location of plumes suggests that they were sourced from an established channel. Now we'll focus on meltwater drainage. I calculated subglacial hydraulic potential to investigate possible drainage configurations below the glacier. K values represent different subglacial water pressures. We see that subglacial flow pathways coincide with observed plume locations. Also, surface meltwater areas filled and drained in a downglacier progression. The plumes appeared after the subglacial drainage system became channelized while the surface crevasses were filled with water. In conclusion, we propose this general sequence. During the melt season, lake drainage releases a large amount of meltwater into the subglacial system. A subglacial channel transports water to a grounded terminus where it rises as a plume. Calving ceases while the plume is visible and the terminus is grounded. Terminus ungrounding leads to plume disappearance and resumption in calving. 
we document a relationship between meltwater drainage and iceberg calving, the two major ways in which marine terminating glaciers lose ice. I am hugely grateful to all those who have contributed to this research. Thank you for listening.